If there's anything that almost 15 years in the music industry has taught me, it's the importance of learning how to work with whatever limitations you have. And learning how to work with minimal resources as a music producer can really help you to figure things out and become even more creative. So today, I'm gonna give you a small example of that and break down how I made my own vintage sample by adding my own vocals with no mic, just an iPhone. So this sample was 100% one of those where you get a melody stuck in your head and no matter what you're doing, you have to get it out. And sometimes the best way to do that is just by grabbing your phone and singing out whatever melody it is that you're hearing. And that way, later on, you can just come back and turn everything into instruments. But in this case, I decided I wanted to use the melody that I sang on the phone, which sounded like this. La 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 la. La 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 la. Now, obviously that sounds terrible on its own, and there's no way that anybody would really use that. So here comes the fun part, which is adding the effects. So the first couple of things that I did in order to get that terrible singing under control was I added this EQ, and then I added some auto-tune just to make sure that I was staying on the right pitch. Next up, I added Little Alter Boy from Sound Toys, and I bumped up the formant a little bit so that my voice sounded a little bit higher without having to change the pitch. And here's what that sounds like. La 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 la. La 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 la. Next up, I wanted the vocal to sound more worn out and old. So I added an RC20 and then I dialed up the follow just so that the noise from the RC20 doesn't play through the entire sample and become a distraction. Next up, I knew that I wanted the vocals to get pushed back a little bit more in the mix. So I added this CLA effects plugin and I used the caveman preset. And then I added some chorus with this choral plugin. And here's what that sounds like. So now it not only feels like it's in an environment, but it's also pushed back a little bit more in the mix. And then I just added some more EQ and then I ran it through a reverb. Now, one of the tricks that I've learned from doing a lot of sound design and working on pop records is if you layer your vocals with other instruments, it can help you to get a really unique sound. So for this sample, I decided to do that and I went with a flute. So for this flute, I went with the West Africa Library and I used the Fula Flute preset, which if I'm not mistaken, either comes with complete or it comes with contact when you buy it from Native Instruments. And then as far as the effects go, I also use another instance of CLA effects using the same Caveman preset. Then I use some compression to basically just tame the sound and flatten it a bit. And then I added some EQ and some reverb. Next up, I kept hearing a funk guitar in my head, so I decided to add one. <laughs> Now staying on theme with basically learning how to work with whatever it is that you have at the moment, I typically don't always have access to a guitar either. And a lot of the guitar sample libraries that you're gonna hear out there don't usually sound all that great unless they're for a very specific style. So this was me making do. So for the guitar sound, I went with the vintage contact library and I went with the Mellotron guitar. And then as far as the effects are concerned, the main thing that I went with was guitar rig. So here's what it sounds like dry. <laughs> And then again, here's what it sounds like with everything added. Hey, real quick, I just wanted to let you know that I put together a whole sound pack for you. I put a bunch of samples in there from different genres. Some of them are soul, some of them are trap, and some are some bonus ones that you'll have to check out yourself. Not to mention, I also added a whole drum one-shot kit from my own personal stash. And the best part is you can have all of that today for the high, high price of totally free. All you gotta do is hit the link in the description and I'll send it right over to you. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. At this point, while I was making a sample, it felt like it kind of needed some warmth, so I added some roads. And for that, I went with addictive keys. For the effects, I didn't really do all that much. I just added some saturation with the J37. Then it was time to add a bass line. So at this point, I kind of felt like I had all of the main sounds for the sample. So from here, I basically just added a couple more sounds to fill it out. The first was a combination of these string and orchestral trills. In both instances, I went with contact libraries. The first one was Lumina. And then for the string trills, I went with the LA scoring strings. And the very last sound that I added was these pizzicato strings. And then finally, once you put everything together, here's what it sounds like. Now, 
if you like this tutorial and you're looking for a simple technique that you can use to help your music sound better without needing to learn any new music theory, check out this video right here.